Some of the most fascinating and mysterious questions in cosmology are, how did the first galaxies in the universe form and evolve? How did they look? How big were they? How many stars did they have? And what kind of elements did they produce? And thanks to a new computer simulation of the early universe, we might be closer to finding some answers. In this video, we will explore this new simulation and how it compares with the observations made by the James Webb Space Telescope. We will also discuss why this simulation is important for our understanding of our origin in the universe and what implications it has for various cosmological models and parameters. So stay tuned and get ready to learn more about the first galaxies and their mysteries. The new simulation that we are going to talk about is called the Renaissance Simulations. It is a set of 70 simulations that cover a volume of about 220 million light years across and span a time period from about 200 million years after the Big Bang to about 1 billion years after the Big Bang. This is the era when the first stars and galaxies formed in the universe, and when the universe transitioned from being dark and neutral to being bright and ionized. The Renaissance simulations are different from previous simulations of the early universe because they can resolve very small dark matter clumps, as small as 10 to the power of five solar masses, and track their evolution into galaxies. Dark matter is a mysterious substance that makes up most of the matter in the universe, but does not interact with light or ordinary matter. It is believed that dark matter clumps act as seeds for galaxy formation, attracting gas and stars with their gravity. By resolving these small clumps, the Renaissance simulations can capture the diversity and complexity of galaxy formation in the early universe. They can also show how galaxies interact with each other, such as by merging or exchanging gas and stars. Here are some examples of simulated galaxies from the Renaissance simulations and how they compare with real observations from the James Webb Space Telescope. As you can see, there is a remarkable agreement between the simulation and the observation. The simulated galaxies have similar shapes, sizes, colors, and brightnesses as the observed galaxies. They also have similar properties such as mass, star formation rate, metallicity, etc. This means that the simulation is realistic and reliable, and that it can help us understand how these first galaxies formed and evolved. So what are some of the main results and analyses that come out of this simulation? Well, one of the main findings is that the first galaxies studied by James Webb are consistent with theoretical expectations. This means that these galaxies are not anomalies or outliers, but rather typical examples of galaxy formation in the early universe. They are also not very different from later galaxies in terms of their basic properties. For example, they follow a similar relationship between mass and size as later galaxies do. They also have similar star formation histories as later galaxies do. They start forming stars very early on, at around 300 million years after the Big Bang, and continue to form stars at a high rate until about 800 million years after the Big Bang. Then they experience a decline in star formation due to feedback effects from supernovae explosions or radiation from massive stars. These feedback effects can heat up or blow away gas from galaxies, preventing further star formation. Another interesting finding is that these first galaxies have diverse properties depending on their environment and history. For example, some galaxies are more isolated than others, meaning that they have fewer neighbors or interactions with other galaxies. These isolated galaxies tend to be smaller, less massive, less bright, less metal-rich, and less star-forming than non-isolated galaxies. They also tend to have more irregular shapes than non-isolated galaxies. On the other hand, some galaxies are more clustered than others, meaning that they have more neighbors or interactions with other galaxies. These clustered galaxies tend to be larger, more massive, more bright, more metal-rich, and more star-forming than non-clustered galaxies. They also tend to have more regular shapes than non-clustered galaxies. Another factor that affects galaxy properties is ryanization, which is a process that occurred in the early universe when radiation from stars or quasars ionized most of the hydrogen gas in intergalactic space. 
This process changed the thermal state and opacity of gas in intergalactic space, affecting how gas flows into or out of galaxies. The Renaissance simulations show that reionization has different effects on different types of galaxies, depending on their mass or environment. For example, reionization can suppress star formation in low-mass galaxies by heating up or evaporating their gas, but it can also enhance star formation in high-mass galaxies by increasing their gas accretion or triggering mergers. Reionization can also create a patchy or inhomogeneous ionization field, meaning that some regions of the universe are more ionized than others. This can create a diversity of galaxy properties depending on whether they are located in ionized or neutral regions. One of the main implications is that this simulation can help us understand our origin in the universe. These first galaxies are the ancestors of all the galaxies that we see today, including our own Milky Way galaxy. By studying them, we can learn more about how they formed and evolved and how they influenced the evolution of the universe. We can also learn more about how they produce the elements that we are made of, such as carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. These elements were synthesized by nuclear fusion in stars and then dispersed into interstellar or intergalactic space by supernovae explosions or stellar winds. By tracing the chemical evolution of these first galaxies, we can reconstruct the history of element production and distribution in the universe. Another implication is that this simulation can test or constrain various cosmological models and parameters. For example, this simulation can test the standard model of cosmology, which is based on the assumption that the universe is dominated by dark matter and dark energy, and that it follows the laws of general relativity. By comparing the simulation with the observation, we can check if this model is consistent with the data, or if there are any discrepancies or anomalies that require new physics or modifications. We can also constrain some of the parameters of this model, such as the density and nature of dark matter and dark energy, the initial conditions and fluctuations of matter and radiation, the expansion rate and age of the universe, etc. By measuring these parameters with high precision and accuracy, we can improve our understanding of the origin and fate of the universe. Of course, there are still some open questions or challenges that remain to be solved or investigated further. For example, we still do not know what dark matter is made of, or how it interacts with ordinary matter or itself. We also do not know what dark energy is, or why it causes the accelerated expansion of the universe. We also do not know how black holes formed in the early universe, or what role they played in galaxy formation and evolution. We also want to know how magnetic fields originated in the early universe, or how they affected gas dynamics and star formation. These are some of the topics that future research in this field will focus on. In conclusion, this simulation is a remarkable achievement that advances our knowledge of the early universe and the first galaxies. It is also a great example of how computer simulations and space telescopes can work together to explore the cosmos. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We would love to hear from you. See you next time.